<laughs> You're very funny. I know I'm funny, yeah. yeah that's it's such strange. a joke. It's a strange joke. <clears throat> well, welcome very, very much to conversation. A dear friend of mine from about a thousand years, we've been known each other, and that's Jonathan Rudin. Ruben. And Ruben. Uh, <clears throat> Jonathan Rudin, and he's an ad light uh, guardian ad litem has been uh, involved with the uh, court, uh, the um, NYCHA situation here in New York City, among other things. There might have been some changes more recently that he could address, but we want to talk to him about NYCHA and about the housing situation in New York, and if we can, expand beyond the example of New York City to other cities in the United States and perhaps to other cities of the world in terms of people of substance or economic substance and some of what is called in a lot of the literature the least advantaged people uh, on a world scale. And that's some of the things we're going to be talking about. And Jonathan, welcome so much. Thank you for having me on the Good show. Good to have you back, man. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> I've introduced this theme, and you could set it right by just talking a little bit about your own background, but hold on for a second. I wanted to talk about how uh, the average price of, a, uh, of an apartment in New York City now, I guess, is, um, you know, you got to get a $5,000 return on or rent and so forth. They're going up, co-ops and everything. Mm -hmm. It's four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 a month mm -hmm. rent just for an apartment of a couple hundred yeah. a couple hundred a couple thousand square feet or something like that that people want. It gets in va great value. They're going to be able to make money by the increased value. And then in the midst of all that, you have this I phenomena in uh, New York City called NYCHA. Mm -hmm. And there the people who do not have great means can possibly afford thousands of dollars a month and so forth, but they have housing and it might be as low as three to four hundred dollars a month. Now, I want to talk about how that came to be. What does it mean in terms of the housing problems of the world and the disequilibrium of capability and uh, wealth among the peoples of the world? And that's what I'd really like to talk about since you seem to understand this uh, phenomena of NYCHA. And maybe you could uh, share with us the establishment of NYCHA. How did it come to be? What does it represent politically in terms of our city? the nation and the world. Okay, so NYCHA is a um, housing project formed out of HUD, which is housing and urban development of the federal government. Essentially in about 1935. Oh, uh, back to Roosevelt. Right? Roosevelt yeah. and LaGuardia okay. were instrumental <clears throat> in the formation of NYCHA. It was a bit of social engineering. It was social engineering mainly because many of the NYCHA residents are getting a federal subsidy to live there. That where they're only gonna be able to, the, NYCHA housing usually, the, the authority as it's called, or the largest public housing authority in the United States is only allowed to charge one third of the person's income for rent. So it's a consideration of the fact many of the people in New York City struggle to make a living, struggle to eat, struggle to even exist. Yeah. Many of them are on, are on the edges of our society, barely interacting with people in certain neighborhoods, barely getting into the mainstream places like say Madison Square Garden or Lincoln Center or the you know movie theaters around the city. Uh, when I watch the movies and I go out to the movies, which I do now much more because I can get a senior discount of about $4 uh -huh. to go to the movies, I don't just stay to go to the movies in my neighborhood. <coughs> right around here, there used to be a very cultural-oriented movie theater called um, Lincoln Plaza. It's I think mm -hmm. it's gone now, uh -huh. but it was a cultural theater that had very independent screen film yeah. screenings. Right. Uh -huh. And so I think you know we have one of the best cultural centers in the in the world uh -huh. in many ways. And I think taking advantage of theaters all around the city as opposed to just something that's w in walking distance really allows one to see um, the um, 
film that's unusual and sometimes socially oriented to make you think about things. And even somebody of modest means living in hot NYCHA could ma manage to get there. Well, or to, or to you, access it, perhaps. Perhaps if they wanted to take the subway. A lot of people do take the subway. A lot of people are That's using the subway. That's another thing I want to bring up. Are yeah. using the subway. But I'm not t totally familiar with the transportation issues, except for the fact that I know there's a cutback in service of transportation now. A friend of mine goes to the Brooklyn Museum all the time, and he said he was all messed up in getting there because the, the one, two, and three service was not going into Brooklyn. There's always some of that going on and everything, but on the whole, New York City <coughs> is a place where people can live their whole life and never have an automobile, which is totally impossible everywhere else in the United States because never is there any place that is so close-packed and so sub, uh, able to uh, provide adequate public transportation to where people in New York don't even bother to have an automobile or need to have one as they would have to in order to exist in everywhere else. So I, you, you asked about NYCHA, and that's what I That's right, and how did it come to be? Oh, what so, makes so, it possible? So the federal, the government, political the federal government created public housing in the 30s. Is that part of the New Deal and so forth? Yes, or? yes. Okay. But, 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 but New York has the largest public housing authority in the country. That is NYCHA. Yes, but yeah. I wanted to make sure to be very clear and very accurate yes. about what happened in the last seven or eight months with NYCHA. Oh, uh, okay. NYCHA's four executives below the executive director either were fired or resigned. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll get to that, why it happened in a minute. And NYCHA's executive director recently resigned. The reason is that 50,000 apartments of NYCHA were certified by, by NYCHA, probably by the executive director, who we don't have to attack a person personally. All right. Yeah. And that person said, you know what? There's no lead paint problem. But she had a report sitting right on her desk that said 50,000 of these apartments had lead paint problems. Well, why would she have said that if I she really was aware of that? I why would know, she I do? don't know what, the, the, I, I've never spoken to her, I've never met yeah, her. Yeah. But it was very, uh, on one of the shows that I was on recently, I said there has to be accountability. And I think, you know, one of the, the, one of the notions of accountability that happened in the first in, in de Blasio's initial election, yeah. Mayor de Blasio's initial election, yeah. is a lot of the Democratic candidates went and, and, and spent a night in NYCHA housing to really understand what it's like to live in NYCHA housing. Yeah. Now, they, 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 they cherry-picked the housing. In other words, they didn't go to the worst places in the middle of the winter where there were no heat in the apartments and things like well, that. Wait a minute, you're talking about something that isn't livable. You can't live in the, in the, in the, in the, with no heat in a well, winter. Actually, but Nobody you know can live like yes, that. Yes, you can't, but there were... Uh, tens of boilers that were dysfunctional last yeah. winter. Oh, okay. Well, but these are details. Yeah. Okay, yes, but yeah. the details, the, the, the housing issue is in the details because there's a very, very good book out there that just came out about a year ago by a guy named Matthew Desmond, who's a MacArthur fellow at um, Harvard yeah. in the sociology department. It's called Eviction, Poverty, and Profit in the American City. Now, he, one of his complaints was that uh, you know, in New York City, there's a housing problem. In, in the New York C Review of Books, they said, th they called it New York City's housing emergency, uh, an article. And they quoted a lot of things that I wanted to talk about on the show. Okay. They, they mentioned this company that I worked for 25 years ago called the People's Firehouse. I'll get back to that in a little while. Okay. But, but, but the NYCHA issue that really exists is the delay in repairs. The constant and and a man named David Horowitz, uh, a radical person years ago, wrote a book called *The New Colossus*, or some that was part of the title. Uh -huh. So I think the Colossus of New York City is NYCHA. I think it's a monster. I think it's out of control, and I think people are abused who live in the system. Okay, Be because. The, they they, have, okay, uh, they yeah. have attorneys who are paid $80,000 a year to defend their interests, and the people like myself are lucky if we make um, a, a fifth of that. I, I, you, you're, you're getting all words, as, it, as, as an <coughs> advocate, I'm not 
respected by the system as much as the attorneys are. I'm not an attorney, but I'm almost the, the last resort to prevent an eviction. You're sort of getting involved in the weeds of the reality there and so forth. I was asking, how did it come to be? It was part of the impetus of like the New Deal. Yes. And there yeah. were other things, the Dust Bowl and all yeah, of that. Yes, but and extreme things, the beginning of uh, welfare, the beginning of, uh, my, my, uh, what is it, uh, the thing that's so effective now in terms of the American population. Social called, Security. Social Security and all of these kind of things were done by a very enlightened person, Franklin Roosevelt and so forth. And there were things to try and help the people who were desperately hurt by that, that, uh, that collapse and so forth. Yes. And it got established so, as a way to serve the interests of the least advantaged of among us. Well, that's now that's an admirable thing that should be part of the American picture. Right. And how did it come to be? Is it a is it a characteristic that had influence in Boston, Detroit, it all had, across the yes, country? Yes, it did. Does yeah. it have influence in terms of national countries talking to one another? And how are we going to take care of the interest of the least among us, rather than catering only to the super rich yes. who are getting a little richer and want to get a bigger return on the value of the big property? Property that they are able to pay well, for, I and how uh, how is how is that going to be dealt okay, with? Harold, the I injustice of that, uh, Harold. I think th th there are a few ways that they're starting to deal with the injustice. And one of the first ways on rent stabilized apartment, Mayor De Blasio has been a very people oriented mayor with regard to housing. He kept five years; he's been in, in office, and he kept. That rent increases, rent increases in NYCHA, uh, in NYCHA and rent stabilized housing, which yeah. NYCHA is, to the lowest increases in 70 years. Well, that would be good to do because it does, it works in the interest of the least advantaged. You have very little money at all to to be able to right. just eke out a living, right, decent but, leave, living. But, but the other thing that we mentioned on one of your shows. How does that happen? I wonder. How does how, how, do how does the society develop a different attitude toward housing for the people who are really not able to afford the higher level of uh, well, qu quality and so forth that the market could make possible to the people who well, are hustling it I, are successful? I think they're subsidizing the housing and they're giving tax. Who's they? It's the, the, government. Government, the government. It's a government. Thing. Yes. Is, yes. Is, is it, is but, it the, but, but, but the government is not perfect. HUD is doing it. HUD. The federal well, the gover okay, then, then what we want to look at is the structure of the judge of the how of the of the government, national and local. Yeah, but I want to also I get uh, it's, it's, you, it's evolutionary you, development. You wanted to know another way that the NYCHA tenants are being protected. So in August 2017 in New York City. Well, that's just yesterday. I was trying to get a longer. No, no, I know you're trying yeah. to get a global picture. Yeah, and right, exactly. Else. I know, but I'm I'm really concerned about New York City. I don't know. You I'm, seem to have a brief against the operation of the people of NYCHA. Yes, the, but, the administration. But, but but I have to say something uh, complimentary to Mayor De Blasio again. He and Councilman Mark Levine and a whole group of tenant organizers and advocates have changed the law in New York City. Just like Earl Gideon before the U.S. Supreme Court made sure th through that decision, Gideon versus Wainwright. Yeah, I don't know that that's, at all. But but it's it's a, a, yeah. Anthony Lewis wrote about it. Uh, it's a decision yeah. which allowed a person in a capital crime. It said you cannot try somebody for a capital crime unless there's an attorney. It was in the 60s or 70s. Okay. And it was the first time the co head court of the country, the U.S. Uh -huh. Supreme Court, said you can't be convicted for a capital crime and go to jail for life or be executed unless you're represented by counsel. Okay. So it started the legal counsel services and public defender services for the poor. Is that the, how long ago was that? About 50 years ago. 50 years ago. Well, that's another thing, protecting the interests or the survival of the least advantage rather than just catering to the successful. Yes, so that's we, what I'm trying to yes, get at. So I was and how does society okay, so at large deal with the least advantage, okay. not only the advantage of the people who are the leaders of the society? Right, but the least advantage by Councilman Mark Levine, another city councilwoman who is unfortunately, I don't remember her name, and Mayor de Blasio got a law enacted 
um, in August 2017, which said if your income is, is below a certain rate, you can go to this HRA office and get a free legal services lawyer. Now, what's the name of that? Is that relevant? There's a lot of people struggling to have a place to live. It is relevant. Now, it, is, be it is relevant, <clears throat> highly relevant, because many of the people coming into housing court where their home could be taken away, taken away, they could be evicted, have no idea what's going on in housing court, have no idea how to protect their interests, have never heard of a one-shot grant, have never heard of a lot of well, things. Well, they're not hustlers like the people who have all kinds of legal no, support no, no, and no, well, are successful in the society. Well, some of them are hustlers, but some of them have... I, don't, I mean hustlers in no, the worst I, sense of the people who've got in with the system and are part of it and of understand poor, it. Some of the poor are well acquainted with the one-shot grant, but many college-educated people have never heard of it. They, they oh, is this something we want to let? Uh, okay. What, so, I, what so I'm trying to get is how can we get a society that allows for the interests of the people who are currently the least advantaged among us well, and take care of their well, interests rather than just catering and giving everything to the super wealthy. Well, that's the, the, what I think Mayor de Blasio has done as effectively as any mayor in a long time. He basically signed this law in August 2017 that people in a certain part of the city, in certain zip codes initially, but eventually all over the city, um, that if your income whether from Social Security or from work, is below a certain level. Uh -huh. I think about $20,000 for a single individual and $50,000 for $20, a... $20,000 a year? Yeah. Okay, go and, on. Uh, yeah. And 40000 for a family of four. 50000 oh. for a family of four. Yeah. You're entitled to a free how lawyer. Much is 20, how much is $20,000 divided by 12? 20 divided by 12, that's a... Thousand, a little over a thousand dollars, or something it's like about, that, a month. It's about fifteen hundred. Fifteen uh, a, something, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. It's about it's about sixteen hundred. Now, there's some people who don't even have that. Yes, many yeah. people don't. How do we deal with them? That's what the, I'd like th to know. That's Wait. what this law is okay. doing. This no. right to counsel law hmm. is effectively doing that better than any part of the country. Okay. It's saying we care about the poor and we're not going to let a person lose their home unless they have a lawyer. And, and that's really and that's throughout the political system. That is. Uh, respected and, uh, and uh, adhered to well, favorably it, without getting, a lot of people saying they're taking away my chance to make another million dollars. It's not effectively known by a lot of people, unfortunately. There are many people who don't know about it. That's why guardian ad litem still exists. What but is that called? Say it again. Guardian. No, the thing you're saying that people don't know about. There's a, a new law as of August 2017 signed by Mayor, my, by Mayor de Blasio, which says that a family of four living with less than $50,000 of income or a person living with one individual living with less than 20000 of income. Of income, of provable income. Of provable that could be income, look, yeah, provable okay. social security, whatever methodology, yeah, right. is entitled to a free pro bono lawyer from a legal services corporation such as the Legal Aid Society. And what will that allow that legal uh, representative do to the interests of her or him being in a place where they could live a decent life with well, the rent paid at a rate they yes. can manage? Well, there are lots of steps. Or be a, a, there are effectively lots of things, allowed to There's manage. lots of things that go on in the housing system. For instance, in some of the cases that I get involved in, with APS, which is a, a, an a adult protective service, oh, yeah, right. okay. a social yeah. services agency, mm -hmm. they have in place sometimes because they're doctor, psychiatrists who go in to meet these people to get accepted for APS services. Sometimes the psychiatrist recommends something called financial management involuntary, which means the tenant may have nine hundred dollars coming in. His rent may his or her. You mean a month? You're yes. talking now. Yes, nine hundred. Yeah. Or, or, or there's some that have less than that. Yes, yeah, many okay. do. Many only yeah, have right. public assistance. But yeah. I'm working with the ones, let's say, who have nine hundred. Public assistance is what. 215 rent public assistance and $200 as a stipend. That's another thing of a government thing? Yeah, that's that a government support system through Anybody H should be able to get that, I would think. That's minimal. Most people are, but here's the... I, I will get we back. Usually we treat the poor with just kick them in the ass. You well, know? There, is a, there is the notion of that through Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. Well, they're more right-wingers. No, yeah. but those folks have pushed 
the president to sign this budget bill, which is taking hundreds of billions of dollars from Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. And, and giving it to the rich? Well, Republicans. Yes, they yeah. are giving it to the rich because yeah. there was a three trillion dollar tax <coughs> bill, three trillion dollar tax yeah. law. Yeah, right. That's hurt, that Mr. Mr. Trump got stopped. Through stop taxing the super rich three trillion dollars yeah. it had to come from someplace yeah, right. and it came right on the backs of the poor so that's happening at the moment i'm trying to get back to how does a society what's the history of a society doing something for the people who are at the bottom of the social order just in economic terms and what are we doing to deal with the people also that aren't um able to function in a way that can bring them in to a reasonable amount of cash money to live right, a reasonable an, an human answer. life. An and answer. what are we going to do with those people, not only in New York, not only in Detroit, not only in San Francisco, but across the world? Right. How uh, are I'm we not, going to I, deal? I, you know what? I, I know Calcutta has got a housing problem. Horrible. Horrible. So, so does Mexico City. Yeah. I know nothing about those. I know. I'm just saying. No, no, I, I, I know. I'm, we're talking about New York night. We'll would stick with that. But I'm trying to tell you, it's a lesson to be learned of to the course. whole world. World. Of okay. course, but yeah. the other issue is, of course, it's a lesson to be learned to the world, for the world. But the other issue is, you asked, how are we dealing with it? Yeah. So during the Truman administration, and Harry Truman was pro. pro Forty-eight. Yeah. Way back. Fifty. Yeah. The early fifties. Yeah. In the early fifties, they started the Guardian ad litem operations. Guardian ad litem. Yeah. Yes. That was you or were. One yeah. Or. I'm still one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank God I am still one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Enough. But but that program guardian ad litem involves a social service agency as part of hra and they go in hra human resource hu human resources administration oh, is that federal S city city okay so that the human re <coughs> hra aps goes in with a doctor to talk to the tenant to see how they're doing to see why they're on ssd maybe or to see why they what's don't. ssd social security disability which many oh, people oh that that would be something through the social that's franklin roosevelt right but, but, but social security is a magnificent thing but, but there are thing. two kinds of social security yeah. or three kinds there's ssi yeah. there's social security disability and there are retirement benefits called ssd SSA, or yeah. that, that's the administration. So yeah. it's just called SS, yeah. Social Security. Yeah. Yeah. That's retirement benefits. That's what people get who've worked a long time and paid into the system. Okay. But some people, unfortunately, don't cope with the system. What is it? Okay, go ahead. Some you know? people. Yeah, have okay. Mental the system. We could talk about some what people makes have up mental the health system. problems. Some people yeah. have mental health problems. Some people have physical health problems. And One of the people I represented had a. Um, uh, 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 an arm and a leg that were uh, removed from his body. I'm, I'm not remembering the word right now. Yeah. On, um, he was, his arm, he, he was an amputee. He, yeah, uh, yeah, right, right, he, right, he, right. So he was getting money because with one arm and one leg, it was very hard for him to function at all. Yeah, we had asked him to hop around if we wanted to in order right, to get more was, money to the so rich. So he didn't go to court, but we won his case. We kept him in his home. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is since about 50, about 70 years ago, approximately, yeah, yeah. Harry Truman, in one of the best things that he did, he was very pro-civil rights, Harry Truman. Yeah, and, okay. and one of the th best things that he did is the guardian ad litem system started in the courts. It wasn't cl quite the same as it is now, of course. Was that somebody with legal capability to deal with the as system? As an advocate. You're, and yeah. people, were they legally trained or not? Or were yes, they just well, a, the, here's the training. It's a little bit of a trial by fire. Yeah. You, you get an initial... That can be very really important. You, you yeah. get an initial three or four hour seminar situation for one day, and then about every, every year there are about three or four seminars you can take, and there are other ways you can take... And they're trying to, among other things, they're trying to gate, gate, guard against people who are trying to cop out against having to get a job? No, no, no. Or don't know no, how no, to get no, a no, job? No, no, no. Or can't participate no, no, as a worker? No, they're or trying to thinking? prevent evictions. They're oh, that's preventing evictions. And now I okay. want to get back to that m Mr. Matthew Desmond, the MacArthur fellow, uh -huh. because he writes about something that most of your listeners may not know, and then we'll get back to NYCHA. Right now, in the United States, yeah. there's about $190 um, billion dollars that's a lot of money. Spent for benefits for homeowners. Homeowners. Not poor people, 
Not yeah. people are suffering so right. much, yeah. but people get those benefits. Right why? now, why? I don't know because I don't work at the federal it level. At the federal level, yes. yes. Maybe the Republicans would do that. Well, yes. They want to try and benefit the world. But it's been around for a long time. Okay, okay. And right now, there are $60 billion accorded in Section 8 vouchers. What's Section 8? That's a That's subsidy a sub that uh, many. Mendel? Might, Mendel? No, you no. don't. It's usually based on income. Oh, okay. Not, yeah, not words, capability. A, no. Uh, well, mental it's, state. Or. It's it's qualifications economics. It's all economic, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's sometimes what we're trying it, to get sometimes at. Sometimes really. it deals with a disability, and sometimes it does not. So that that my issue and Mr. Desmond's brilliant some issue, psychological issues yes, come up. Yes, but Mr. Eight. Desmond's brilliant statement about that is that there may be something wrong with the federal leadership. They can't raise the sixty billion to ninety billion, which will only be half of what the homeowners get. I, I I've lost you down the All line. All right. Now. Well, you're talking about helping the least amongst. Yes, them. that's my main concern. So there's yeah. a problem if right now. Systemically, I'm sorry, I'm I made a mis yeah. another yeah. mistake. It's actually forty-five billion, mm -hmm. not sixty billion, that the Section Eight vouchers cover in the United States. Okay. That's not a lot of money when it's you consider that it's a less than a quarter of what's going to the people who least le need it. The homeowners, the people who own their home, are getting four times the, the government assistance. Well, that makes it better to make an investment in a home so you can get a growth of the worth uh, of your property. I understand. That's the whole game most people are I concerned with. I understand, but you know mm. what? We're supposed to be concerned about the poor. Not to say this administration, but this man came into power saying, you know, You're the government. you Mr. Trump. Yes, you, yeah, yeah, he well. came into power saying the government didn't care about you. I care about you, yeah. which is a crime. And he sold that to a lot of people. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he <coughs> won over enough to win the election. Yeah, right. But uh -huh. in reality, the government gives less than a quarter to the poor. So Mr. Desmond, the author who's been in the New York Times and whose book is critically acclaimed as a very quality book, has said that essentially right now, if we just raise that $45 billion to about $67, $68 billion, we'd eliminate the need for these emergency grants. We'd eliminate a lot of the non-payment cases. We'd eliminate a lot of the evictions because then the government would be supporting about two-thirds of the rent of the poor. And that's a program that exists right now for a lot of people, but it doesn't cover maybe 50% of the people it should still cover. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to follow. Yeah. Yes. So these, are the, these are in the weeds and the details of the No, but this is a serious, this is a serious detail when we look at Are those at things observing, are, are, are trying to move against the interests of the people? I'm talking that's about... That's for I'm the trying, people who... I'm trying to talk that's about the people do not have a possibility to function like a hard-working person yes, I, with I, a pure I, I ethic and all that. That's what they second, can't do he's it. saying if you raise Section 8 from uh, the number of people you're getting it now to add 50 percent more to Section 8 recipients yeah. to make it, to make it instead of 45 billion, 70 billion, be you'd help the, you'd help a lot of the people that are being left out of the paradigm of work every day. Of yeah, but uh, now that now you're getting down to the areas of a good life, work, the work ethic, getting on a job learning to do what you're told, all of those issues of a Protestant ethic that seems to be wanting right. to be met but, by but, people, but, but, but and we, there are a lot of people just simply can't qualify. You're right. Too and many what are we going to do with those too, people? But, 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 Some of them are very brilliant poets and whatnot. Well, f you're or, right. Or, you're, or, yeah, okay, you're, you're absolutely right when you say it. As a matter of fact, some of the greatest artists we have yeah. can't function in the mainstream so well. Right, it sucks. Yes, but, but, but what's worse is that a lot of them are not part of the civil society by the way, the nature of the housing situation. The well, we're back again to how are we going to handle I'm, the problem? I'm going to talk about something. Not only here, but around the world. Yeah, I'm trying to focus on okay, New York. Okay, 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 sorry. Go it's, ahead. No, the, New York is maybe the most advanced place on the planet. They're dealing with the issue. It's advanced. It's, it's, it's state of the art, but it, you know, there are a lot of problems. 
As I well, said, well, it's good to get some examples from state of the art that might be improved right. as a model for others. Right, of course. But that when are you, systemically when, when you have relevant. a housing commissioner of NYCHA or executive director of NYCHA who basically tells the government in November or whatever time it was last year, in 2017, that 50,000 units of housing have no lead paint problems when she's got a report sitting right on her desk that they're. Now, the, why would she do that? I what don't know what the, the motivation No, but was. what would be. Uh, that's, that's nefarious? Well, uh, uh, she put money in the bank to buy a mean coat. What's the reason that I they would do that? I never well, what do you guess? I, I, what would I, be the reason somebody was, in that I, I sense think, of responsibility I, I would she, ignore I it? I think she didn't if think that's it. You I, think it's important? I think it's it's life-threatening yeah. for certain people. They get a, asthma problems, So wh what cancer. is your best guess as to why those kind of things go on among the people in because that Because I think there's a, you know what? Here's another example. I, think I hate to use this. I hate okay. to use it. Go ahead, use it. Tammany Hall has existed in New York City for Thank a long time. Thank you. Yeah. There was a state senator, Daniel Squadron, who resigned mm. because he didn't like the politics in Albany yeah. with the IDC, which is the independent. This was the 19th century. Yes, but, yeah. but this is in the 21st okay. century I'm talking about. Oh, well, okay. Daniel yeah. Squadron resigned in the 21st century. Oh. He was a state senator who represented the Lower East Side. I thought Tammany Hall. It's the corruption still exists. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Daniel Squadron resigned. He, he was a, a state senator from the Lower East Side and Williamsburg. Those were amongst the places he represented, Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So he had a, a representation in Brooklyn and Manhattan. So there was a, a process. It's called the Democratic County Committee vote. It's supposed to be 2,000 people vote to help select the Democratic candidate to run in the in the, to serve in office and to run in the next election. It's supposed to be more fair than it actually was. Here's what happened. In the vote in Manhattan, this man named Paul Newell, he won mm -hmm. with about 42% of the vote. This other man named Kevin Kavanaugh had about 20 25% of the vote. My friend Councilman Gerson, who I helped to elect mm -hmm. and worked on his campaigns a, a bit, uh, he got about 18% of the vote. So this guy, Paul Newell, looked like a pretty strong candidate when you went over to Brooklyn. But the Brooklyn County leader, one man, said Brooklyn votes with Kavanaugh. Brooklyn's throwing its support behind Kavanaugh. Sounds so, political hijinks. It was total corruption. Corruption is another and term And so for that's hygiene. why I referred to Tammany Hall, because mm -hmm. In no way was the Democratic Party process set up so that one person should be able to select the state senator to represent several hundred thousand. That's getting into the weeds of the overall political system. But, but that's just one example yeah. of corruption. That's just one example. I'm trying to get down to the root causes of how the world society seems not to have been able to come up, particularly in a time when the technology is really uh, challenging the whole labor theory of value and the work ethic and everything yeah, that goes with it, a, how come okay, the world has not been able to come uh, up with an answer to this question? How are we going I'm to be able to, to answer, deal give with the justice I'm for try everybody to, instead of just I'm the few try to give hustlers? You, I'm going to try to give you a very pertinent another example of another book, which I highly recommend. It was quoted in the New York Times. It's called The Color of Law. And it was by Richard Rothstein, who's okay. a Thurgood Marshall Fellow for right. the NAACP Legal Defense Good, Fund. Yeah. And the thing and about that book, folk, the yeah. thing about that book is it says the setup in our society is that government, banks, and real estate have allowed the segregation of our people. That people of color more often live. They have allowed it. Yeah. Yes, they've allowed well, it and they've helped it along. They've yeah. helped it along. They have basically made it happen, yeah. made it happen that the people of color, the black people and the Hispanic people do not live in the elite neighborhoods, do not and do not um, by, 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 by what method? By, by, what, by, by, by what loans ability? and tax write-offs and benefits that they've given. To who? To so certain the, white the, people or something or what? The, the, the people, for instance, in World War II they were talking about, yeah. communities out west. And many of the people were working hard to support the war effort who were non-Caucasian. And those people were not living 
in much of the housing created out there in the West where the white people lived. They were doubling up with families. It's called racial disgusting ratios of prejudice. It's yeah. total prejudice. And but it's talk got, about the Amer Indians for crying out yes, loud, the way they've been treated. Of course and that's, was, that's the picture across the world. Well, the American Indians... And it to, just allows to ferment. The American Indians were but, actually uh, were treated to a form of European genocide. Yeah, yes, yes. But, well, that's just, yeah. But, but getting back to the improvement and the lack of improvement. So the, the 50,000 units of housing in New York City, in NYCHA, were certified as lead paint free. They were not. Back another another issue. problem. Why is that such a big issue? Because lead paint and a, has a, causes. No, I know there's some the dangers. Or black something. lung disease. Yeah, something like that. So what? Why would somebody not? Uh, I don't know. Why wouldn't the God blessed place be painted if that's what it takes? I mean, what causes that to happen? We well, also may have to rip. Is out, somebody making may, a buck off you, it or you, something? You or may what? Have, you may have to rip out the walls and you know put up new. So walls. if that's what has to be done, why isn't it done? I don't know because it would give a lot of workers is a it, lot of work. Well, it would give the workers a lot of work, but then somebody got that money that would have gone to those workers in some sort of a thing oh. where they could go on a vacation to Hawaii no, no, or something even, or buy even, another yacht more, or something. It's it's even worse than that. Oh, wow. It's much worse. For repairs, NYCHA has $2.5 billion in their bank account. Two and, point, that's a lot of money. And it just sits there. And the, 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 the bureaucracy, which is, I call NYCHA the Colossus of New York. The, the current, Colossus current, of current, New York. current Colossus of New York. Well, oh. it's, a, it's a monster of out of control. And I believe it's out of control. I, I worked for this, helped this lady out in Brooklyn yeah. in, in um, a housing project um, near, near um, uh, DeKalb Avenue. I don't know Brooklyn. Well, it's, yeah, a, it's okay, a walk yeah, okay, from DeKalb enough. Avenue. Okay, I don't fine. remember the name of the project. Yeah, okay. I don't remember the name of the streets at this mm. point. But this lady just wanted a paint job on her NYCHA apartment. When they finally did it, it took two men one day. Two men yeah, right. one day. Yeah, sure. I had to get six orders from a judge to get that done. Six. <clears throat> why? Because they didn't care. Wh who's they and why don't they care? Because the are maintenance they, Are they the raking the money off for something no, else or what? No, the link up of the bureaucracy mm -hmm. from the repair line and the repair tickets to the maintenance workers is totally messed up. Why? Because, because it's better to do it their way. What way? The non-way. The non-way, well, then they could pocket the money. No, it's not. Or no, the, what do they do the with the money? The money's sitting in the bank. Mm. Why, why do they, why do, why, Because okay. they're dysfunctional. Why? Because oh, they're, they're incompetent? No, it's a, dysfunctional? it's a, it's a Are big, they making a profit there's, off it? There's, What's, is it corrupt? There's, what is the reason? There's That's probably what I'm getting Tens of thousands of people who work for that NYCHA, New York City Housing Authority, and to get them to function efficiently without bureaucratic red tape and to do the things that they have to do, sometimes it takes a judge to throw it back in their face time and time again till they wake up. So we got the job done, but it took us, it, I started this lady's case in the fall of one year and it took until June of the following year for they, them finally to do a job. Are there forces that would like to do away with anything Ah, like the the charge of NYCHA, which is to serve the least advantage. They don't want to serve the least well, advantage. I, I, they don't want anything that goes to the least advantage. They want them all to go out and become a worker and get a job and do the thing. And they want to encourage them all to do that work ethic thing and everything. I'm gonna and that's not going to work gonna, any longer. I, I'm going to hesitate to say certain things, but I'm going to say them anyways. Okay. There's a state official, one of the top state officials, he, he was the top housing commissioner, housing, not commissioner, top housing official yeah. in the Clinton government. Yeah. You'd think he knows the problems here in New York City. He grew up in New York City. Yeah. I don't know why he wants to have the monitor of the state appointed by Scott Stringer. I don't know why. Where's he, Scott Stringer he's now? He's the controller of, he's the, controller. Okay, of yeah. the city of New yeah. York. He yeah. beat, uh, I know him. He, yeah. he, he, he won a campaign against the former governor, oh. Mr. Spitzer, who had some oh. ill repute. But Elliot. Yes. Yeah. But the point, and Mr. Spitzer was big in the real estate world. Yeah. Okay. But, but what I would like to say, though, is look, I don't, it's not easy being a public official. I, I know bet, that. yeah. But, but I, I would imagine that the HUD 
uh, secretary, as it was called, the highest. That's Washington. Yes, now. but yeah. that's what Mr. Andrew Housing Cuomo was. Yeah. Mr. Andrew Cuomo was the HUD secretary yeah. for f about four or five years. And if he was the HUD secretary, he had to know what was going on in the state that he became attorney general of mm -hmm. and later governor of. And I wonder what reports he's seen that whether there were any or no reports on NYCHA conditions when he was HUD secretary. And his bureaucratic uh, s arterial sclerosis well, it just of the, uh, adder of the, uh, the yeah. Of it the just, it, it, look, I'm not challenging Andrew No, you, you're describing something that I'm trying to get at the bottom of is why in the hell is it like that? That's what I'm trying well, to get at. It, it seems that business as you... And it's you, across the country, the business, Chicago, St. Business Louis. Is, no, but they're cutting back on pro, pro, public well, housing. Well, that's with the current uh, president. No, yeah. they've been cutting back on it for a long time. Beyond that? I mean, back into yeah. Obama and all that? Beyond before that. Yeah, okay. But, okay. but, but Mr. Cuomo had to know as somebody who wanted to run, run government in New York State and who became the attorney general and later became the governor, what was going on in housing as the HUD secretary. You know, he must have seen something reported to him one time, even if he only read a paragraph about it, that NYCHA's out of control, that, which it is. Is that, a, is that a thing generally recognized? Yes, it's Because been. of bureaucratic incompetency? Mm-hmm. Not because of skullduggery or money being siphoned or I something? I don't know anything about money being siphoned. Is it just incompetence? I think it's bureaucratic incompetence. Well, that happens often in bureaucratic organizations. But this is a mess that affects 400,000 New Yorkers. What about, what about what, the people? One in, no, as your last guest yeah. said, it affects 1 in 20 people in the city. Well, or well, my last guest was talking about pigeons. I know, but he and I had a conversation yeah, about Yeah, he's nine, a nice guy. Really yeah, he's a very guy. nice yeah. guy, but he, mm. he, he basically agreed with me that one out of 20 New Yorkers should be something that the government should have a heck of a lot more concern than it does. And one he, out of 20? I'd say more than one out no, of 20. Four, well, at least one out of 20 as well. Well, at the very minimum, there's all kinds of people. And it's going to get worse. Right. but the, the, the whole tendency of the whole system. No, but it's gotten better. And you, oh, you, go on. Go on. I'm trying to read. I want to hmm. say Mayor de Blasio, yeah. who we brought up a few times, yeah. has been the most pro-tenant mayor in my lifetime. He, he had, number one, the least increases on rents for rent stabilized apartments for five out of the last 70 years. Of How low can we go on the rents for decent housing he, for our less advantaged people? For four people? years, there How was free. Four years, there were zero percent increases. Mm. Never happened before. He did that by appointees he made to the rent guidelines board. The second thing that okay, he yeah. signed Practical into law, thing, yeah. that he signed into law, he signed into law the right to counsel for poor people or people who are disabled. What good is it going to do the council if there's no ability for them to have any status why they should get money at all? Well, right now they're still getting Section 8 in many cases. Section 8 is coming to them because they're disabled or, or low Not income. because they don't low have... Low income, too. Well, low income is because they don't have the ability to have what is good. Uh, be, uh, they're, not working for some, they're not working for some reason. A person not working is not always not working because they don't want to. Some people want to work and they can't but work. But there is this ethic, this is awful work ethic that no, there but, is. Yeah, but it's, we, a, it's a blight upon the society. Yes, but you and I discussed that. But they, it's very deeply rooted in yeah, a lot of people's thinking. Yes, they can make their own thing, just get out there and no, build a bridge. No, but you and I bridge. discussed something else, though. There's the ethic of Ryan and McConnell, those federal legislators, mm. that, that the um, Calvinistic Boot yeah. them in the ass. That Boot Protestant grandma ethic, in the ass yeah. at age 90. Yeah, right. 90 year olds have to work according to <clears throat> Do me. the Yeah, get them out there working in the field. They did it with a lot of the blacks. 90 year olds? Yeah. 90 year olds? Yeah, why not? Oh, by the way, blacks. You because know, they're lazy and but they don't no, know no, the no, pyramid no, 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 ethic no, no, and all no, the no, bullshit. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, uh -huh. no. I want to tell you something else. Yes. There's another book which I highly commend to your listeners. Yeah. It's called Slavery by Another Name. Okay, that's good. By, yeah. by Douglas A. Blackamon, <coughs> which know. basically said in Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina, Louisiana. I shudder to think of it. At Alabama. Uh, in the 19, in 1959, yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was alive, it's slavery. Yeah. Yes, but listen to yeah. this. You didn't yeah. let me finish. Sorry. That a person could be picked up 
for vagrancy. Mm -hmm. They didn't have an ID. Yeah. They could be judged by a magistrate. Yeah. A magistrate doesn't have to be a lawyer. Yeah. Could be a political appointee. Yeah. And he could say, I fine you $50. Yeah. So that's a misdemeanor conviction. Not a felony. Yeah. Not anything really yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. The misdemeanor. U.S. Steel. They haven't got the $50. The U.S. They don't. You're yeah. right. And U.S. Steel sits in the back of the courtroom and says, you're not going to go to jail. Don't worry about it. Sign here. You'll work it off. Those that's slavery. Well, here's the slavery. Wage part. slavery. It's, it's all wage they slavery. They were tools and wage slaves because they worked for life. They lived in deplorable conditions. Anybody who works as a slave in a No, but, it was, but they yeah. worked for these huge national corporations that were trying to BS that they were doing the person a favor by keeping them out of jail. And in a sense, they kept them as misdemeanor convicts working for life to work off the $50. Okay, how are we going to get out of this? Or how is humanity going well, to racism, deal? Well, racism has to be much more uh, uh, attacked. We have to attack it in a few ways. We have to make sure that when New York State has a, a state monitor in place to equalize the funding for education around the state, that it gets done. But that's another bureaucratic mess. Why are we so tied up in education? They because education gives one the skills to get good work. Yeah, but that's the assumption. They think that if you get it, that's why people go and get educated. They're going to do something or they're going to get a certificate that's going to let them do something so they can get well, money. Yes, but there's another issue about money and situations that I, I went to a, something called the New York Citizens Action Network, which is Action Network. Is that, uh, it's, 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 it's is a, that a, our guy? Is, the no, guy uptown? No. No. no, it's a state organizing group, New no. York Citizens Action yeah. Network. It's not the Action Network of Al Sharpton. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah this is different. This he's is, really moving this up is a very, national thing. Yes, yeah. he's a great guy, but yeah. this is a very important thing that I'm going to say. It analyzed uh, wealth and income by demographics. Mm -hmm. And it said a black college educated person had an approximate income of approximately 24,000 a year, or wealth of 24,000. A black college educated person. Listen very yeah, carefully. Yeah, I'm listening. A, a Hispanic might have about 33,000 mm -hmm. in wealth or income. And what would an Anglo-Saxon Here, white is all good out get? Listen to this, this is the, the real other horror. There's two horrors. I'm going to talk about New York okay. Citizens Action. So the white college, the white high school dropout yeah. has a wealth or income factor of fifty-five thousand. And there's a white that's a, yeah dropout. Dropout. Dro dropout. Dro yeah. Like a custodian. <laughs> and what about the people, the the ones that are beyond that have been to Harvard? You know, some of them have great wealth, and some of them do. No, but you got it. You got another percentage there. You don't the, know no, that. No, the, I don't. You were talking are, about the dropouts. What no, about the people no, who no, function but that, but as white? I understand. And their skin is white no, as but white. I'm, but I'm disgusted by the fact somebody does. It. Here's why. Yeah, the difference. Here, yeah, I hear you. Here's another thing that yeah. I want to tell you. Yeah. Before I graduated high school and before yeah. I graduated college, I earned $150 a day in 1973. Were you running numbers? No, or I was what? a golf caddy. Oh, gaff, golf caddy. Oh, I right. had to carry bags. Don't of talk golf. about golf caddy. Don't. Nobody I did that ever. with Danny Darrell a couple of weeks ago. And All right, we're not going to go yeah, on yeah. here. So here's the un other analysis. He used to be a caddy. Here's the other crazy analysis of New York Citizens Action. It's really, really galling to me. We have a situation where 25,000 people are in prison every day who have not been sentenced to yeah, anything. Yeah. 25. It's a sin. It's and a sin. I didn't exactly pinpoint one of the reasons. One of the reasons is the bail bond issue, that many of those people can't get bail when they're arrested. For a joint or something. Or yeah. Some stupid little thing. Yeah. yeah. If you're and black. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Especially if you're black. Yeah. And that's most yeah. of the 25. It's called prejudice. It's total It's prejudice. called ignorance. It's called history. It's R called something yes, horrible. But and here's the other thing. As and Bru untenable as Bruce, as in terms of the evolution of human culture. As Bruce, it's not going Wright, to work. As Bruce Wright, the first black yeah, justice yeah, yeah. of the I New York State. I did program with him. The first black justice of the New York State Supreme Court put it. It's black robes, white justice. Yeah, right. Here's the reason why. Until he started to say, I have the discretion to choose the sentence for somebody, which pissed off or angered a lot of people mm. of his fellow barristers, there was many sentences that were mandated by the laws from Albany. Uh -huh. But the people in Albany don't really have an understanding of the situation 
in the in the inner cities of New York. Mm. And also, you know, getting back to that New York City's housing emergency article by a man named Greenberg. I don't remember his first name. Yeah. Not Jack Greenberg, the lawyer and law professor. We used to have a ball player in Detroit. Yeah, Hank, Hank Green Greenberg. Yes, but this Greenberg wrote this article. And he, he talked about the situation of the People's Firehouse, which leases out, is a housing manager of housing in, in Brooklyn. MNN's producing out of a firehouse on I know that. Street. I now. know that, but yeah. the People's Firehouse was created out of a community uprising. Uh -huh. Mr. Beam, interestingly, wanted to shut off the fire services and close engine company 212. Mm -hmm. And why was that so terrible? They had cut back on a lot of services in that Williamsburg, Northside Williamsburg community. And worse than that is that they thought in a place where the, it was had the f fourth highest incident of fires in the United States, it was a situation where it didn't matter to the people, they thought, and they didn't <coughs> think the people would object. The people went to the fire station and they had six people guarding the doors with shotguns. Yeah. And they won their battle until Bloomberg shut it in 2000. And three. Let me say a couple of words about something here now. I, but, was, uh, I go ahead, say, go ahead. I have to say something. Okay, go so ahead. So that was by done not just by Mayor Bean. It was done by two social theories. HPD Commissioner, um, uh, what's his name? It'll come. Roger Starr maybe was? Yeah. Roger Starr yeah, yeah. believed in planned shrinkage, that if you minimize the community, the problems would go away because you would allow development. Yeah. Mr. Moynihan believed in benign neglect. The people out there were outraged. How dare these people, Mr. Starr was a big municipal person, Mr. Moynihan wound up being senator, yeah. he's a pretty good senator, yeah. but they didn't care that these people, mostly Polish in that community, Northside Williamsburg, would, would object. And a neighborhood grocer named Adam Vineski said, no, 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 this is our community. This isn't your right to tell us how to live and how to survive yeah. and, and to cut off services that are essential for life. And incidentally, when Mayor Bloomberg closed the, fire, the engine company 212, and he was a pretty good mayor, actually. Mm. He was a, one of the better mayors, <coughs> um, although he had six problems, but which were his six problems were the stop and frisk, the term limits problem, the uh, school pro school's education quality problem, the uh, NYCHA problem, the development problem, and um, the um, prison system, the prison system problem. Just to, get a, just to get a few things down. Yes. Yeah. But he was a very good mayor because he actually improved the economics of New York City. Yeah. He actually presided over a city where they put up a lot of trees and cared about the earth a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And he actually was a person who, despite those criticisms that I made, presided over a city where crime dropped astronomically. But most people think it was him and Giuliani who did that. But actually, it was Lee Brown and the people who worked for Dave Dinkins who did it, who had safe streets, safe cities, and community policing that cut the crime problem. So Dinkins doesn't get the credit for that. And he instituted the police programming, which allowed Mayor Dinkins, Mayor David Norman Dinkins, yeah. instituted the police programming, which allowed Giuliani and Bloomberg to get a lot of credit for reducing crime because yeah. the crime numbers went yeah. down during yeah. their term. All but he, this man who did not get the respect of many New Yorkers as he was cast out and Giuliani won the election, in actuality did something for the quality of life for everybody of the city for many decades to come. This is details of a situation re uh, coming out of history <coughs> as we can address these questions and so forth and how can we understand what's going on. Let me propose something else, if I may. Um, I keep coming back to the thing of how are we going to do it. And <clears throat> there's the labor theory of value and the idea by both Republicans and Democrats have this moral sense that in order to get anything in the world, you have to work, okay? You have to work. But there and has to be accountability of government too. 
Italian. Well, all right, let there be. That, no, no, but there's not, as we said, NYCHA's a mess right now. What's the accountability there? There's talk of having a state monitor. There's even talk of having a federal monitor. Well, all I of don't, that, all I of don't that. really care whose oversight it is. I care that it's corrected. Not only is there the 50,000 units of NYCHA housing, which possibly 80,000 people live in or more, that have lead paint that causes black lung disease and asthma problems and even death. There's a mold fungus problem that's pervasive, pervasive. Mold is all through the housing. Well, those, those are tens all... Tens of thousands yeah. of units of mold fungus problem. So they talked about the mistake of this woman who resigned, and we don't have to name her name because I don't like attacking people. She made a mistake. She th saw it as egregious enough to resign. But you know what? They don't talk about the mold fungus problem, and they don't talk about correcting the problem and having the accountability. If there's a federal monitor and he or she does something, great. If there's a state monitor and she or he or she does something, great. Instead of just the talk, there ought to be the action. So you're right. There is the work ethic, but a lot of the No, I'm, I am one to uh, <coughs> say that, that we're hung up on that. And what's happening in terms of the well, development of uh, a technological extension of human consciousness in terms of a productive process is aiming just relentlessly toward eliminating the uh, basis for what is called the labor theory of value that people will get income by their labor participation in production. Understand. They are going to be put out of the picture in a, in a well, world that is going to be done by technological systems. I understand. All the assets of which are owned by a tiny bureaucratic class, right. they're going to have to have an alternate way other than labor or slave labor, or the kind of things that you're talking about, well, the I, manipulation Well, I actually read another of. book. I read another book, which is very well, relevant. Oh, In okay. one minute, Isaac, uh, Isaac Illich Rubin yeah. wrote this book called Criticisms of Marx's Labor Theory of Value. And one of the problems with Marx's labor theory... Not only that, it's the whole system. No, of, but uh, but not only Marx, it's yes, the whole but system. Yes, but one of the problems of this situation... We're almost done. One yeah. of the problems of this situation, yeah. which it says the yeah. owner, says the owner and the manager benefit extraordinarily, and we have the 1% of those owners and managers who uh, get m millions. Yeah, the people the who own, and the thing is you're going to have to... And the managers. Have, you know, I'm saying they're going to have to have, in 30 seconds, they're going to have to have an alternate way of forming capital that will get ownership of capital base to the masses of the people as a way of distributing income rather than employment well, and trying to, to work the old union system. movement. No, though. there has to be an, an enlightened view that has to come, and it's not dawning. No, it's not. But the okay. union movement has got to be stronger, too. Well, because the union movement is not strong right now. Okay, well, anyway, uh, we're, 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 we're being 86. Is that what they call it downtown? They call it 86 when you're mm. being thrown out of the saloon, right? Okay. So we give the credit, and we're we're being closed. we got to go. Thank you for that. Thank really. you so much. No, Thank it's a pleasure. You got a lot out and so forth, and uh, I still just am interested in the alternate way that's going to happen, not only in New York City, not only in the United States, but in the world. Yeah, and I in wish the time I, ahead. I, I understand there's, lack there's of vision. got to be better housing for people in the world. Some people, some families live in a one-room hut. We know that. Mm. And, <coughs> and there, there are a couple... The labor theory of value is the worst problem that has to be addressed. Right, but there are one billion people, one billion of our fellow humans live where they don't even have clean water to I drink. I know, we got to do something about it, right? Yep. We really do. Okay, thanks for viewing. We'll be coming back again. Uh, his name is Jonathan Rubin, a good citizen guardian at Lightroom. Thanks a lot. We're being uh, 86 out here. We got to go. There's other people coming in. Thank you very much, everyone, for viewing. We'll be coming back again tomorrow on Conversations. Thank, Thank you, you so John. much, Harold. Thank, Thank you. Okay, off we go into the wild blue yonder. Let's go. People are way overdue. Come on in. Open the screen. Open the screen. We're out of here. Okay. So do you have a, a desk that I can pay for? What yeah, you? whatever you want. No, I'm not. It's what you want. It's what you. I mean, did you, was there a disc recorded here? Yeah, I, I think so. I do think you need it, it or do we need it? I don't know. Wait a minute. Okay. okay. How are you doing? Come on here. How, how did it look? Fine. Sorry. It is just sorry. How did it look? I just don't have a lot of information.